So just be aware of that. Just full disclosure there. Um, and yeah, and that means like if you can't make it, I'll put the videos up um, on YouTube or, so, or somewhere, and I'll give you guys the link so you can watch it later. Okay. Um, so I wanted to go through a bit more math um, before we move on to mechanics next week. Um, so on the printout there, we've got. I went over um, doing basic conversions, but I'd just like to go over it again because uh, I kind of rushed through it a little bit. So for number one, turning 10,000 kilojoules into joules, uh, before we do that, we'll just write down all our prefixes again. So, so N for nano is times 10 to the negative 9. Uh, micro is times 10 to the negative 6. Miller or M is times 10 to the uh, times 10 to the negative 3. Uh, center is times 10 to the negative 2. Kilo is times 10 to the power of positive 3. Mega is times 10 to the 6th power. And Giga is times 10 to the power of 9. Okay? So you should be really familiar with that uh, by the end of the week. So for number one, we're trying to turn we're trying to turn 10,000 kilojoules into joules, right? So are we trying to add a prefix or remove a prefix? We're going to remove a prefix, right? So removing a prefix is pretty simple. You're just going to write down the number, 10,000, and then we're going to replace that k with what that prefix is. So k is times 10 to the 3, right? So we're just going to write down times 10 to the 3 joules. And what's times 10 to the 3? That's just 1,000, right? So that's 10,000. times 1,000, or we're just adding three zeros to it, so that would be 10,000, and then we're going to add another three zeros, so that's going to become 10 million joules, right? So now, if we didn't want to have so many zeros, we can now tidy it up, so there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 zeros. So we're going to go 1. Oops, it's a crooked one. So 1 times 10 to the power of 7 because there are 7 zeros. So we can write that as 10 million joules, or we can write it as 1 times 10 to the 7 uh, joules. Or you could just have because one times something is just that number, so you could just write 10 to the power of 7 as well. Okay? Um, so now the second one. For the second one, we're turning 312,500 joules into kilojoules. So here, are we trying to add a prefix or remove a prefix? We're going to add a prefix, right? So when you're adding a prefix, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. So you have to divide by that prefix. So we know that k is times 10 to the 3. So we're going to take our number and divide it by times 10 to the 3. Or, I mean, times 10 to the 3, that's just the same thing as um, 1,000. So that's the same thing as 312,500 <coughs> divided by 1,000. So you can do that on your calculator. And if you did that, the answer would be 
0.5 kilojoules. Okay? Um, and then we're trying to turn 0 0.5 grams into kilograms. So we're trying to add a prefix. So what do we do when we try and add a prefix? We're going to divide it. Yep, divide it by that prefix. So the prefix is times 10 to the 3 or 1,000. So 0 0.5 divided by uh, 10 to the 3. And that's going to be 0 0.0005. OK? So if you divide it by times 10 to the 3, you're just going to add three more zeros after the decimal point. OK? So see how I've added three more zeros after the decimal point. There was only one zero up here. And now there's one, two, three, four. So that's 0 0.005 kilograms. And if we wanted to write it um, without all the zeros, we could write it as 5 times 10 to the power of negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 zeros. So it's going to be 5 times 10 to the negative 4 kilograms. OK? Um, so we did the minutes one, didn't we? We did the time one last week, uh, on Monday. Um, and we did the velocity. So number 15 there, I've just got uh, the 120 millimeters of mercury into pascals. So millimeters of mercury, or mmHg, is the unit that they give you your blood pressure in. So when they say 120 over 80, or whatever your blood pressure is, that's the units that they're using. Um, but for physics 191, you have to uh, convert millimeters of mercury into pascals. Okay. So the conversion for that is to take the value. So 120 millimeters of mercury. So Hg is the, sim the chemical symbol for mercury. And we're trying to turn that into pascals. So it's pretty simple, just 120 multiplied by 133.32, okay? So if you do that, you'll get 15,998.4 pascals, okay? Yeah, that's right. So she just asked if that's a constant uh, when you always, when you're converting from millimeters of mercury into pascals. So that's correct. You, if it's from millimeters of mercury into pascals, uh, that's the you're just going to multiply it by that number there. So that's on the on the handout that I gave you last week as well. So um, it's all in, in that list of units. I've told you how to uh, convert that. Um, so I just want to say one thing about all these units, uh, why we put so much emphasis on these units and prefixes. So there was a case, um, I think a few years ago, where this lady died after starting chemotherapy treatment. Um, and that was because she received a dose that was about a thousand times larger than she should have. And that's because the person that was calculating the dose put in the wrong prefix. Okay, so this can have in school, or I mean, in, in the exam, it might just be um, you get one question wrong, right? But if you become a health professional or whatever you do, one day that could translate into a, a life that's been lost because of a silly mistake, okay? So that's why there's so much emphasis on these units and prefixes. You might think it's not a big deal, but it could be one day. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, 
Um, so we'll go on to the next page. So, Bedmas. Yep. Oh, yeah. So number ten is we're trying to turn one hundred kilometers per hour into meters per second. Um, they'll often give you velocity in kilometers per hour, but in physics one nine one we have to use meters per second. Okay. And to do that, you're just going to divide your number one hundred divided by 3.6 and if you do that that's going to be 27 point 27.8 meters per second okay so you just divide the the value by 3.6 so if we wanted to go from meters per second to kilometers per hour would we multiply by 3.6 uh yeah that's right yeah so if you want to go from meters per second into kilometers per hour, you'd just do the opposite, which is multiplying by 3.6. OK? So yeah, everyone's confident with turning hours and days into seconds? So BEDMAS, so that stands for so B is for brackets, E is for exponents, D is for division. M is for multiplication. A is for addition. S is for subtraction. All right. So um, I'm sure you've seen questions like the first one there on Facebook and people arguing about what's the right answer, but there really should be no argument because there's clear rules in mathematics about the order of operations, okay? So which symbol in that equation has the highest priority? So the multiplication, right? So we've got 3 plus 4 times 8 minus 1. So we're going to do this one first, 4 times 8, 3 plus so 4 times 8 is 32. 3 plus 32 minus 1. What's next? Addition. So 3 plus 32. Uh, that's 35 minus 1. And our answer is going to be 34. OK? Sweet. So that's pretty simple. So then we have our next one, number two. Uh, this is where I just use this, want to use this as an illustration of how you can get the wrong answer when you use your calculators. So on your calculators, if you press in four times one, If you press in these buttons, one, uh, divided by, oh, shit, no, sorry. Um, so depending on the calculator you have, um, on a graphics calculator, it'll be this button here, that exponent button. So that's, and on a, uh, 
and on a scientific calculator, oh, sorry, on, yeah, on a scientific calculator, that'll be x with that little box on it. Okay. And then after that, put in the divid divider sign, 5 times 1 Okay, so just uh, put in those values on your calculator, type that in your calculator, and then what answer do you get? Sorry? Yeah, so on your calculator, if you, if you put it in like that, you're going to get 80,000. So if you put it in like that on your calculator, you're going to get um, 80,000. And that's the wrong answer. What the answer is supposed to be is 8. Um, and I'll show you why you're getting the wrong answer. So what you really want to do is you want to do 4 times 10 to the third power divided by 5 times 10 to the 2, right? If you look at this equation here, which one has the highest priority? It's the divided by, so division is before multiplication. So it's going to do this first. So it's going to go 10 to the 3 is just 1,000. So 4 times 1,000 divided by 5 times 10 to the 2. So that's going to become 200. 4 times 200 times 10 to the 2. So that's going to become 4 times 200 is 800 times 100. And that's going to become 80,000. But that's not what we wanted to do. What we wanted to do, so that what I just wrote down is what the calculator did. So that one was wrong. What you wanted to do was you wanted to do 4,000, right? 4 times 10 to the 3, that's just 4,000, divided by 5 times 10 to the 2 is also written as 500. So 4,000 divided by 500 should be 8. Okay? So you should be using you should be using this button here. So on the scientific calculator the one right of the of the dot, okay? If you're using exponents or if you want to do times 10 to the power of something, use the button next to um, the dot there, in between the answer and the dot. The reason I'm going through this is because I see a lot of people doing it wrong and then getting the wrong answer. Um, and this way is a lot simpler. If you have a graphics calculator, it's going to be, can I just grab it? It's going to be in the same spot. So at, on the bottom row there, um, on, to the right of the dot, and it's going to be that exponent exp button. So, so yeah, um, cool. Then we'll just move on to exponents now. So what's 2 to the power of 0? Yeah. 
So 2 to the power of 0, that's just 1, right? So anything to the power of 0 is just going to be 1. What's 2 to the power of 1? 2. 2 to the power of 2? 4. 2 to the power of 3? 8, right? So, sorry, if I just write that out, 2 to the power of 2 is the same thing as 2 times 2, which is 4. Or you can say 2 squared, 2 to the power of 3. You can say 2 cubed, so that's 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Okay, so that's pretty easy. I expect everyone should know that already. Um, so then, this one's going to be a bit tricky. What's 2 to the power of negative 1? Yep. So, if we have 2 to the power of negative 1, we can just write it as another way, like this. So it's the same thing as 1 over 2 to the power of 1. Okay? So two, what's 2 to the power of 1? Just 2, right? So that's same as 1 over 2. 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5. Okay? 2 to the power of negative 2. How could I write this? Yep, so it's, the answer is 0 0.25, but if I expand it out, it's the same thing as 1 over 2 squared, or 2 to the power of 2. So that's 2 squared is 4, so 1 over 4, that's the same as 0 0.25, and then 2 to the power of negative 3, that's the same as 1 over 2 to the power of 3, okay? So 2 to the power of 3 is 8, 1 over 8, and that's going to be 0 0.125, okay? Um, so you'll see why I go over this later on, uh, when we go over solids and fluids and also um, electricity. Um, I think we'll skip the 0 0.5s, we'll go straight to number 12. So 10 to the power of 0. Yeah, so anything to the power of 0 is 1. 10 to the power of 1 is equal to 10. 10 to the power of 2, or 10 squared, is 10 times 10, which equals 100. 10 cubed, or 10 to the power of 3, is 10 times 10 times 10, which equals 1 thousand. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Ten to the power of negative one. So we're going to write that as one over ten to the power of one. Ten to the power of one is just ten. So one over ten equals 0 0.1. So see how we have 1, 0? 10 to the power of negative 1, except it's now, we have 1, 0, but it, it's now in front of the number, so it's going to be less than 1. So 10 to the power of negative 2, we can write that as 1 over 10 to the power of 2. 10 squared is 100, so 1 over 100 is equal to 0 0.01, 1, 2 zeros, negative 2 here, 10 to the power of negative 3 is 1 over 10 to the power of 3, 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000, 
So 1 over 1,000 is equal to 0 0.001. So there's 1, 2, 3 zeros, three, uh, negative 3 here. So that's, uh, you, you always put uh, the decimal point after the first zero. Okay, so if I said I wanted to do 10 to the negative 6, um, and I just wanted to write out all the zeros that I had, I'd go put down my first zero, put down the decimal point, so that's one zero, two, three, four, five, six zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a one, okay? So that's how you do that. Um, so I'll cover E or Euler's number on the next page. So we'll go to logarithms. Does anyone have any questions about that? Cool. Okay, so <coughs> we have, let's say we had 10 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So this number here, this part here, is what we call the base. This number here Oh, sorry. This number here, this is the exponent. Okay? So, that first question there is saying what's the log of 1 if the base is 10? So, this subscript here, this subscript 10 here is indicating to us what the base is. And that's going to be that number there. And what this is asking us, if we were to interpret it into words, it's saying what exponent would have to be on 10 in order to get an answer of 1? Okay, so what would the answer be? Zero. Zero? Yep. So that means 10 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Okay, so with logs, you're always trying to find what the exponent is. Okay? So then, our next example. Uh, so, <clears throat> and also on your calculator, uh, you'll notice that when you enter your numbers in, it doesn't say log subscript 10. That's because it's by default always going to be uh, base 10. Um, okay? So then log of 10. So that's saying what exponent would have to be on 10 to get an answer of 10? So what would that be? 1. So 10 to the power of 1 is going to equal 10. So then what's the log of 100 going to be? Yep, so it's going to be 2. So we'd need 10 to the power of 2 to have an answer of 100. Um, and so just one more. The log of 1,000 would be 3. three. Yep. So that means 10 to the power of 3 is going to equal 1,000. Okay. So my last video cut out um, because I, my camera ran out of battery. So I'll just continue that, uh, the rest of that tutorial. So we'll go to Euler's number. So number 5, e to the power of 1. So E is something that we call Euler's number. Um, it's quite similar to pi in that uh, it's an endless number and 
uh, it's just one of those numbers that come up in nature and it's quite useful for graphs like exponential graphs and uh, those sort of things. So on your calculator um, above the LN button next to the log button uh, if you do shift and LN you should be able to bring up E to the power of something and if we just put 1 in that box uh, and you press equals or enter you'll get 2.718 so remember that anything to the power of 1 is just itself so that's the value of Euler's number and there'll be a whole lot more a whole lot more numbers after that ln is just a log function with the base of e so if we wanted to find the log the natural logarithm of 1 that's the same thing as saying we want to find the log of 1 with the base of e so of course that would be equal to 0 because e to the power of 0 is equal to 1 so remember that anything to the power of 0 is uh, equal to 1 and then if we wanted to find the natural logarithm of 2.718 or Euler's number itself our answer would be 1 so that means that e to the power of 1 is equal to 2.718 and then the natural logarithm of 7.389 which is the value of e squared would be equal to 2 because then e to the power of 2 would be equal to 7.389050 uh, um, you might find that you'll get 0 0.9999 something or 1.999 something that's just because you haven't put in all the numbers after the decimal point so we'll move on to multiplying fractions multiplying and dividing fractions so for physics 191 uh, you only need to worry about uh, multiplying and dividing fractions that's because you don't need to worry about adding and su subtracting fractions which can be a little bit harder so multiplying fractions is really straightforward so number one there we've got 3 over 2 multiplied by 4 over 5 we just multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators so that turns into 3 times 4 multiplied uh, over 2 times 5 so that's 12 over 10 12 over 10 is just 12 divided by 10 is just 1.2 okay Uh, number two, three quarters multiplied by one half. Again, we're just going to multiply the numerators three times one, multiply the denominators four times two. That's going to be three over eight. Okay, which is uh, zero point two five. 0 0.375 cool so then we're going to move on to dividing fractions there's one more step involved in dividing fractions so let's say number three we have two over three uh, divided by four 
4 over 7. So we have to flip one of the fractions. So we're going to flip this one. So it's become going to become 7 over 4, 2 over 3, times 7 over 4. And then we can just multiply these two fractions together. So that's 14 over 12, and that's going to be your answer. So we'll do one more. One quarter divided by three over eight. So remember, we're going to flip one of the fractions and then multiply it. So 1 over 4 times 8 over 3. Multiply the two fractions together, so 8 over 12. And that simplifies to 3 over 4. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, that multiply... Uh, uh, that simplifies to two-thirds. Not thinking properly. Alright, so then we're going to move on to rearranging equations. We've got d equals velocity times time and we want to rearrange for t. So we want to get t on its own. We're going to create this triangle. Oops. So just this triangle here. Um, v and t are together, so they go down the bottom. d will go up the top. Okay, so we want t on its own. So that means D and V will be on the other side with D being on top. So T is equal to D over V. So that's how we would rearrange that. Next we have uh, we have acceleration is equal to force over mass. Again, we have three variables, so we're going to build that triangle. Uh, the top one will be F, and the bottom two will be A and M. Okay. And we want to rearrange for F, right? So we need F on its own. That means A and M will be together on the other side of F, that's going to become force is equal to A multiplied by M, and it doesn't matter which order they're in, so it's the same thing as M times A. Uh, next, we want to rearrange for M. So, same triangle, F, A, M, so we want to rearrange for M, that means F and A will be on the other side with F being on the top, so mass is equal to force over acceleration. So, you can see that if you have um, something on the denominator that you want to, uh, if you want to swap, make the thing on the denominator the subject of the equation, then you can just swap it, swap it straight with uh, the one on the other side.
Uh, next, we're going to rearrange the distance equation. So d is equal to half times a t squared. So the first thing that we want to do, so we want to rearrange this for acceleration. And because this one has uh, more than three variables, we can't use that triangle. So the, our first step is going to be get, to get rid of this half. Uh, so to get rid of the half, you're going to multiply both sides by two, because two times one half is going to be one. And one times anything is just itself. So that means we can get rid of the one. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2. That becomes 2, two times d is equal to 1 because we've multiplied the half by 2. Uh, so that's going to be 1 times a t squared. But we don't need to have that 1 there because 1 times a t squared is just the same as a t squared. And then... Remember, we want to get a on its own, so we're going to get rid of the t squared by dividing both sides by t squared. Okay, so these, the t squared on top and t squared on bottom cancel out. And that means that now we can bring a to the left. a is equal to 2d over t squared. Okay. Next, we want to uh, rearrange this for t. So now we want to get t. And it's important that when you are rearranging, you want to get t on its own. So don't inc include the exponent. We need to get rid of the exponent too. So first of all, we're going to get rid of that fraction again. So multiply both sides by 2. 2d is equal to a t squared. And then we want to get rid of the a now. So divide both sides by a. The a and a cancel out. So we're just left with t squared. In order to get rid of the square, we can take the square root of both sides. The square root of a squared number is just itself. So that means now we just have t on its own. And it's t is equal to the square root of 2d over a. Next, we have an ideal gas law equation, P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. And we want to rearrange for T2. T2 is on the bottom, and we want to get it on top. So what we can do is we can flip both sides of the equation. So that means T1 is going to be on top over P1 V1. And that's equal to T2 over P2 V2. Okay, so now we've flipped both sides of the equation and that's still the same equation. Uh, the next thing we, that we want to do is multiply both sides by P2 V2. Uh, because we want to get rid of this and get t2 on its own. So what's going to end up happening is that p2 and v2 will just end up here. Uh, but I'll show you how that happens. So we've got t1 over p1 v1 times p2 times v2, right? And that's going to be equal to t2 over p1, oh sorry, p2 v2 times p2 v2, because we've multiplied both sides by p2 v2 to get rid of that. Um, so we can turn this p2 v2 into a, a fraction. 
by putting it over 1, and we'll do the same on this side. So now we're going to multiply these two fractions together, we just went over that. So multiply the numerators, that's going to be t1 times p2 times v2 over 1 times p1 v1, which is, so 1 times anything is just itself, so we don't need to put the 1 there, so that's going to be p1 v1 is equal to t2 times p2 times v2 and p2 times v2 on the denominator. Uh, of course p2 and p2 are going to cancel out. These are going to cancel out. So that leaves us with t2 equals t1 p2 v2 over p1 v1. And so you can see that uh, if it's on the bottom, it just goes to the top on the other side. Okay. Our next one is an equation used in viscous fluids. So we've got the volume over time is equal to the change in pressure, or delta P, multiplied by pi, multiplied by radius to the fourth power, over 8 times eta, which is the viscosity, times the length. So we want to get T on its own. So again, it's on the bottom. We're going to bring it to the top by flipping both sides. T over V is equal to 8 L delta P pi uh, to the fourth power. Okay, so on my worksheet there I've got R to the power of negative 4, but that's wrong. It should be R to the power of positive 4. I'm sorry for that typo. Um, so we want to get rid of the V because we want T on its own. So remember that if it's on the bottom, we can just send it to the top on the other side. So it's just going to become T is equal to 8 times viscosity times the length times the volume over delta P pi r to the fourth power. Okay? So our next one, uh, we're going to rearrange for R. So this time we want to get R on its own, or radius. So this time R is already on the top, so we don't need to flip the equation what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the ones on the bottom first. So we're going to send 8 times of viscosity times L to this side here. It's going to become volume multiplied by 8, multiplied by viscosity, multiplied by length, over the time is equal to delta P times pi times r to the fourth power. Okay, so now we want to get r on its own, so we're going to get rid of delta p and pi. So uh, we can treat this like a fraction, so if this was over 1, if it's on the top, so we said if it's on the bottom it goes to the top, if it's on the top it's going to go to the bottom on the other side, so it's going to become v8 L over, so T delta P pi is equal to R to the fourth power, okay, and to get rid of that exponent we're going to take the fourth root of R to the fourth power and we're going to do the same on this side. Okay, and that's going to get rid of the, that exponent. 
and we've got our formula rearranged. So that's a bit of a difficult one, but if you follow the steps, it shouldn't be too hard. Now finally, we'll just do some basic trigonometry. We have a right angle triangle. And we know the sides of, uh, we know the length of two sides. So of course, the side that's going to be opposite our right angle, or the longest side, is going to be our hypotenuse. And we would like to find out what the length of the hypotenuse is. So we can use Pythagoras' theorem, which is basically a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So this side will be a, this side will be b, and the hypotenuse will be c. It doesn't matter which side is a and which side is b. Um, so we can just write that as c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So you can have that on your cheat sheet if you want to. So then c, our, the length of our hypotenuse, is going to be equal to the square root of 4 squared plus 5 squared. So if you put that in your calculator, you should get an answer of 6.4. So pretty simple. If you've been given the length of two sides of a right angle triangle, that's going to be how you calculate the length of the hypotenuse using Pythagoras' Pythagoras's theorem. Okay, so now we have another right angle triangle and this time we've been given the angle and we know that the hypotenuse has a length of 10 and we would like to find out what the length of this side is. Okay, so you need so katoa. So is for sine of theta is equal to the opposite over over the hypotenuse. Ka, C-A-H, is for cosine of theta. So theta is just a name for the angle. Is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And toa is for the tan of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Um, in my experience, you nearly never have to use uh, tan, uh, but I'll just put that in there for uh, completeness. Okay, so remember that this side here, the longest side is the hypotenuse. The side that's going to be opposite the angle that we've been given, so this side here, is going to be the opposite side. And this side here that's next to the angle that we've been given is going to be your adjacent side. Okay, so we've been given the hypotenuse and we want to find out what the adjacent is. So that's going to be A and H. So the one that contains A and H is going to be this one here, ka, so C-A-H. So we're going to use cosine of theta and our angle is 30. So for physics, you always have your calculator in degrees. You don't need to use radians at all. So that's cosine of 30 degrees is equal to adjacent over our hypotenuse, which is 10. So we're going to multiply both sides by 10. So 10 times cosine 30. 
So when you do this in your calculator, uh, if you just enter in 10 cosine 30, it automatically, uh, the calculator automatically multiplies it for you, so you don't have to do 10 times cosine 30. You can just enter in 10 cosine 30. Uh, so t the 10 times cosine of 30 is going to equal 8.66. All right. So this time we want to find out what the opposite side is, so the, the length of the opposite side. So we've been given the hypotenuse and we want to find out the opposite. So that's O and H. We find the one that has O and H, that's going to be so. So we're going to use the sine of theta and our angle of 30 degrees is equal to our opposite, which we don't know, over our hypotenuse, which is 10. So again, multiply both sides by 10. 10 times sine of 30 is equal to the opposite. And if you do that in your calculator, you should get an answer of opposite is equal to 5. Okay? So that's going to be your answer there. So thank you very much, and I'll be uploading a new one next week. See you then.